explain myself. But I like to do on my platform. I like my friends to brag a little bit. I know we like to be humble, but before we get into the nitty gritty and everybody listen to our conversation, I need to know who you guys are. I need to know why I'm connected to you, not just because you not you got like how we got connected in the first place, mm-hmm. just because we work on the same type of vibe. So I need you to spill two teas on the type of stuff that you work on, because they need to know like who you are. Okay, let me hop about my humble bag for a second. Let me try to pop some. Uh, pop it. <laughs> let me try to pop it. Yes, I have been a personal hairstylist to Regina King um, in the past. When I first started in this industry, um, I have worked on some of some really awesome, really dope, really amazing TV shows and movies. I do a lot of commercials. Um, yeah, I've been blessed. God is good. And I'm just ready to keep working with these hands because there are some great, great things coming from myself and my sisters. And yes. I just hope y'all stay connected with us because they'll be coming for you too if you do. That's right. Yes. All right. Sharice, go ahead and briefly go ahead and tell them who you are, boo, and what you've done. And I mean, just pop your stuff a little bit. We need to know. Uh, first of all, I got to start from where I'm from. Okay, I'm from Detroit. I have to drop that first. I always got to talk about my city. So, um, I've been a hairstylist. Um, I've worked with people like Ashanti. I've been a personal for Ashanti. I've also been a personal for Sierra. Hey, how you doing? Hey, what's up? (laughs) Nick, we're going to introduce you in a second. Sharice has introduced myself, and then I'm going to go ahead and introduce my baby. Okay. Okay. (laughs) I can't wait to talk about him. Okay, yes. so I told you guys I worked with Ashanti. I've been a person for Sierra. Um, I worked with a, a couple other different celebrities. Worked in, I'm currently working in TV and film. Did fashion, we've been a platform artist, had my own salon, and blah, 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 blah. Let's get to him, okay? <laughs> I'm just excited to get to him. <laughs> Why do my friends like to do this? They don't like to talk brag on their self, but I need you guys to know who they are, like how amazing they are, the work, the work they've done. And I just had the opportunity to bring my other friend on. His name is Nick, and he is our guest today. <laughs> so everybody, yes, welcome, Nick. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Appreciate so it. So I just What's wanted up? to just basically say who, I, how I met Nick before we get started, guys. So I think it was what Nick six or seven years ago. I can't remember. Yeah. It's been about, a while. about seven years ago, yeah. Yeah. possibly eight, maybe seven years ago, we actually met on the set of Star, mm-hmm. right? Was it Star? Yep. It was Star. Yep. So we met on the set of Star. If you guys don't know, that Star is that show um, Queen Latifah. with Queen Latifah, Brandy. Um, Brandy. Uh, yes, like it was a everybody. whole lot of. Yeah. And it was like a, it was a it was the it girl show like it was the show and yeah. me and him we just clicked like we just had such a good time we was always laughing I don't know why yeah. the hell we was laughing we would just look at each other <laughs> and we would just be laughing because um, we were there all day cr- going crazy that's why <laughs> <laughs> exactly and he was just always just so fun to be around just a bright spirit like he super talented so I so Sharice actually suggested you to come yes. on the show oh today. thank you yes. <laughs> yes, she did it. and she, Sharice is all the way in Texas and oh, she was okay. like do anybody know Nick and I was like that's my friend <laughs> <laughs> he's a beast and I know a beast that's crazy. Know. That's and crazy. she was like well let's bring him on and I was like I would love to bring him on so Nick, while you're on here, I just want you to give people, like, let people know where you're from, who are you, okay. um, and what you do. Uh, okay, well, what's up, everybody? My name is Nick Nelson. I am originally from South Georgia, so I'm a country boy from Dawson, Georgia. Um, I've been in Atlanta for about 20, 23 years. I moved here right after college, and I actually um, started out as a biologist, as a scientist. Okay. I was in that field. Yeah, for about five years, and I hated it, you know, and I just needed something else. <laughs> and as luck would have it, the people at the job fired me. So it was like, you know what? I'll never let this happen again. So that's like two days later, I was enrolled in hair school. So that is me, and I've been in the field now for about 20 years, about almost 20 years. Killing wow. again. Hey, my wow, ass. well, I did not know that. You didn't know that? No, <laughs> yes. I did not know that. Wow. Yep. I, I was a food scientist for about four or five years. Yeah, wow. that's dope. Oh, you yeah. are a scientist, Nick. You are scientist. <laughs> and, and, and I mean, I'll take that. you on this side. So, you know, y'all here, I mean, I want to start off with that inspiration. I love that he spoke that because a lot of times people be thinking, 
a rejection is a complete denial. Mm -hmm. And right. most of the time, mm -hmm. when God says no to something, that means he's telling you yes to something That's else. So yes. right. I can't Absolutely. wait for you guys to Absolutely. hear the story and to know who, who this man is because mm -hmm. I wouldn't have never known, you know, you go from scientist to a freaking hair magician. Right. Like, what? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> who knew? Yeah. Right. Yeah, okay, I, I, so I, tell them, what was, who was your first celebrity and what made you switch over to wanting to be a hair stylist? Oh my God, man! My first celebrity was probably Outcast. Outcast. I used to work at this braid shop. Yeah, yeah. I used to work at this braid shop back in like 2000, and you know I was working at part time as like their barber or whatever. And Outcast would come in, and all the Dungeon Family, and you know that was kind of like my introduction to the whole celebrity world. And you know during that time, Atlanta was like Atlanta rap was like huge. You know, what I'm saying? Yeah. 2000, 2001, it was like they was everything. So. That just kind of blew my mind, and um, that was just my introduction to the whole celebrity world. Um, and then when I actually started actually doing hair, got my license and all that stuff or whatever, um, Angela Simmons has been, like, one of my longest-running celebrity clients. And she was, like, my first, first celebrity client that I actually, like, started working with by myself. I see you guys have a great relationship. Yeah. yeah. She's my yeah. Little That's She's my so sister. hard to find in our industry. Yeah, 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 yeah you don't yeah. get that, especially with celebrities sometimes. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I've, I've, been, I've been to her house. I've been to her parents' house. I've been, you know, that's just the type of relationship that we have. Anytime she call me, like, Nick, I need you. I'm like, all right, what, what we doing? You know right. what I'm saying? So it doesn't, it doesn't matter, you know. So, I, yeah, that's that's awesome. I love that. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So what made you want to get into TV and film? Because that's where we're going to talk about that. And then we're going to okay. go into the topic that um, we all put together for you today. Okay. Um, but what made you want to work in TV and film? You know, I think it was just a natural progression as far as my career was concerned. Mm -hmm. You know, after being in the salon for such a long time, owning my salon for 13 years, mm -hmm. um, I think I just had did everything that was to be done in the salon, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, and it was like, okay, what what is there to me, for me to do next? Right. And I think TV film was just, especially here in Atlanta, because it's such a vast um, thing here because there's mm -hmm. so many people that are doing it now. There's so many studios here. So many people who are producing. So many people. It's just so much to do in TV and film, yeah. film in Atlanta now. I think it was just a natural progression for my career. Mm -hmm. You know, and I was like, you know, I'm getting older. I can't be behind a chair all day, every day. Yeah. But yeah. I'm starting, you know, you know, I'd rather go sit Creaking. down, go go to <laughs> go to the, uh, go to the, um, uh, set, do hair real quick, and go sit for the rest of the day. Down there. <laughs> right, exactly. And what have been your what has been your experience? Have you feel like it was like a good turn for you, like a good pivot for you working in TV I, and film? I think it was the best pivot for me. Um, you know, I think that like like for myself, I always feel like there's I have to one up myself a little bit. Okay. You know, it's like okay, well you've owned this, you've done that. What is next? You know what I'm saying? And I yeah. think when I think that when the pandemic hit, of course we were doing certain things before the pandemic in the TV industry. Um, but I think once the pandemic hit, it kind of like accelerated it a little mm -hmm. bit you know right. like i was able to get which was ironic you know what i'm saying but i was able to get more opportunities more jobs more people were calling um then we got uh queens and it was just when I, once i got the show queens it was just it just took off from there and That's, it was that crazy. would actually awesome. be our next question um i'm gonna hold go ahead and let my girl um sharice or rachel whichever one um talk about the topic because queens would be the perfect um the perfect a uh, point oh, that we can put on. Yeah, mm -hmm. because so basically he worked on Queens the entire time and of course our subject our subject today is the difference between working in TV and film and then working um, just like on set Yeah, the red carpet. carpet. Exactly, uh -huh. red carpet. And being so you have both clients, you have film clients mm -hmm. and then you mm -hmm. have outside clients that are celebrity clients right. you know the best of both worlds. Uh, so right. working with Brandy on that and then working on her personal stuff, that's the type of questions. So, Sharice, I'm going to let you take it from here. Okay, so one of the things um, I would like to talk to you about is having setbacks. So, oftentimes, when we're on red carpet, we carry just a few different things. What are some of your main tools that you carry that you would use on set versus being on the red carpet? Mm -hmm. Because it's a whole different world being on the red carpet versus being <laughs> on set. You know what? Um the thing is, is that once you get to the carpet, I think, you know, you just don't, you don't have the space to carry all that stuff that you would normally do on set. Right. So, um, you know, it's right. not that much right. of a difference for me, you know, especially like when my girls are wearing like, 
you know, if some of my girls are wearing units or something like that, you always want to make sure you got some adhesive or <laughs> some some spray mm-hmm. or some pins or, you know, with the unit, you know, you just make sure you want to make sure you have those types of things mm-hmm. or whatever. But to me, it's not that much of a difference in, in that set stuff and the red carpet mm-hmm. stuff. So. You carry it different, like a smaller set bag. Yeah, I, yeah, I do. I carry a smaller set bag yeah. when I'm on a red carpet versus right. when I'm on a movie set. Right, right. And, you know, and of course, you know, some of the um, supply stores will, will carry, they'll sell the smaller, you know, the smaller sprays and mm-hmm. stuff like that, whatever that mm-hmm. will fit in the bags. So, yeah, definitely smaller stuff. Yeah. Okay. What, what is one of that? your... What is one of your favorite products that you use? Just like, you know, a finishing product while, you, while you're on set or while you're on a red carpet. Just like a little quick one, too. Like, your go-to product. <laughs> um, my old boss, um, her name is Tanya. Tanya Bellamy. She developed some products. And she's um, she's in Washington, D.C. now. She has a salon up in Washington, D.C. But she used to own this salon here in Atlanta called Say. I don't know if a lot of people remember that, but it was spelled N-S-E-Y-A. A lot of people called it Insaya, but it was a top black beauty salon in the in the nation. Okay. And she has a product line. It's an iconic product. It's called Iconic. That's the name of the product line. Okay. But she has this, like, finishing gloss. And the gloss has this, I wouldn't say glitter, but it has these, it, it shines. Like, when you put it on, it shines, it shimmers. I mean, it's just the best thing, especially with, your nat- with the natural girls or anything like that. It's the most, I mean, yeah. it's just the best, the best finishing tool that I've ever used. Okay. okay. I'm adding this to my list. I know, but thanks for the yeah. tea. You yeah. said. I yeah. that. Sip it I mean, if, um, even if you look like, at it. Thank you. <laughs> if you look at it in the clear bottle, it just looks like, you know, like it has, it looks like it has glitter. Okay. That's what it looks like. And it's, yeah. Yeah. So I see, oh, I see, oh, and I see. You know what's so dope about like us stylists? Everybody always use different stuff to get, you know, that same type of look that we're going for, yeah. but everybody use different type of stuff. Like yeah. I always like to ask my celebrity friends or my set friends or whoever I'm working with at the time, what type of product? So that was a good um, question, Rachel. Right. Because, like everybody, I mean, I'm a product junkie. I don't know about Me y'all. Too. I love yeah. oh my like, God. so much different stuff. Like, cause you just, they always coming out with so much stuff. Yeah. Right, 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 yes. right. And you, if, I mean, if I showed you my cl- my 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 um, garage, oh. uh, my manager, it's just so much. I get so much product like every day <laughs> as a box at the door. I'm like, I love that. Dang, I don't I don't need anything else. Let me tell you, just come get some of this stuff because I got so much stuff out there. I had to build the whole thing. Just to put this well, hold on. on, you know how people be saying stuff and they don't really mean it. Let me find out. I'm about to come knock at oh, your door. Listen, what a Kale, Kale, Let me tell you something. I, I, I hold on. I'm gonna show you. But I Nick, whole... Nick, for real though, if he say I can come get some, I'm coming to get it. I don't and care I really, how much stuff I get. And this is just this is just for you because this is a box of just color stuff that I'm coming to get it tomorrow. <laughs> and I know, I know you would love I'm this. Coming, <laughs> get it Tell, I got good. three boxes. Bring him on here. Um, Nick, you got two, Nick, you got two other new sisters. Okay. You know, I'm coming to get my box now. But I have they three, all bo- three in boxes. Dallas, now. They going to have to fly out here. Tell, tell him he got two other new sisters. Okay. They do. They all the way in box. Dallas. Every day. So let me Every tell day. you how I met them just briefly and we can go okay. back. So okay. I got hired. You know Wakia, right? I don't think so. Okay, so Wakia. Why- Akia, she's a dope hairstylist. I love her so much. She's here in Atlanta? She, yes, she's in Atlanta. She's here okay. in Atlanta and LA. So okay. she hired me to go to Texas, and I went to Texas, and I met these two beautiful ladies here. But actually, I met Rachel on Instagram and in person, me and her met in person in Texas, and we literally been connected. And it's almost been, well, it's been the earlier this year. Yeah. Did, I was right. I'm about to tell him it's been a year. It, it feels like yeah. it feels like it. Wow. I, I wow. think we can, when we connected it, it, it has been a, about a year, probably a little over these, a year. These are my spiritual sisters, yeah. Nick. No lie. Like I I've known people for years, and I'm connected to. But like deep, like I love them. Like they yeah. are so talented. We talk almost every day. Yeah. <laughs> Literally, we talk yeah. almost every day. So I think it's good that. that we're doing this to just let people know, you know, and highlight some dope artists like you because. A lot of times, like, yeah, you're good on social media, but a lot of people don't. You're not really posted every single thing on social media. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. like, I need we needed people to know, like, who these dope people are so they mm-hmm. can get dope advice from you guys. So mm-hmm. let's switch it up some. Let's start talking about the mentorship. Okay. 
Um, and then we can go back to the question. Um, okay. Was there any mentors on your way coming up? Yeah. Yes. Um, I think for me, every salon owner that I worked for was pretty much almost a mentor for me. Mm -hmm. Um, the first salon princess, her name was Princess. She was, um, her name of her salon was Princess Palace. And it was over in Greenbrier back in, you know, back in the day. And, you know, just watching them, you know, do their thing and own a salon, it was like, okay, well, if, if they're doing it, I can do it. And then I moved on yeah. to my cousin's salon. My cousin owned a salon in, inside the Walmart. And that was like my first real job after I got my license. So it was in the Walmart out in, uh, off Panola Road um, in Decatur, Latonia. And it was like, okay, my cousin was really showing me the ropes of owning a salon. Mm -hmm. Like she really showed me the ropes. And then I moved on from there. I moved to Insea and, and from there it just, it just took off because that salon showed me that I didn't have to necessarily be in a little square room, square uh, place. You know what I'm saying? Like this lady's, uh, her salon was two stories. Yeah, it was wow. two, it was two stories. It was a 36 chair salon. Wow. Oh, wow. You know, I mean, two stories, and that was the bottom floor, and the top floor was a full service spa. Wow! So that type of person, you know, like watching her, she was walking with me, coats on every day. You oh, know, that's okay. like that's oh, and we we had to dress like dress dress, like all mm -hmm. black. I mean, it wasn't no professional. Oh, it was exactly. I mean, you came to you came to work work. I mean, and so watching them. That to me, that was mentorship. They didn't necessarily have to proclaim to be my mentor, yeah. but mm -hmm. just watching them and in, in, in their spaces, you know, and learning from them and taking whatever I could at what they were offering. I mean, to me, that was mentorship. So it, it helped me build my salon, and I had my mm -hmm. salon for thirteen years. I love and a, that. And a booming said clientele. That. I still have a booming clientele. Yeah. You know, I just you know when I can go there. <laughs> you know? I love that you said that. You know, when you, when you talked about paying attention and working in a salon environment that wasn't just a small box, but you were actually in a space with other like-minded mm -hmm. individuals where you got a chance to learn and pick up things from them to yeah. figure out what is it, what is it that's necessary, what's not necessary, and yeah. that's how you're going to come up. Yeah. Now, going back to, I mean, I know this is kind of soft of soft of subject, but when you talked about the salon and how you learn, and that was kind of your mentors because you got a chance to to learn from them. That goes to like the sweet situation. A lot of people are working in sweets now, mm -hmm. so we kind of like lost our way when it came yeah. when it comes to um, learning and being able to network and being able mm -hmm. to you know learn from our peers within us. Yeah. Yeah. Or learn or or just learn how to communicate. Because what you don't realize is you kind of become robotic when you're just on, you know when you're on your social media all the time and you're just in this the sweet and it's just you and your client. So you don't yeah. really have much conversation mm -hmm. more how to mm -hmm. converse with the client unless you're already experienced right. most of the time. Mm -hmm. But if you're just coming straight from cosmetology school, you going straight into a suite. It's, most of the time, you if you if you know your clients that's coming to you, they're telling you that their stylists barely talk to them because they mm -hmm. don't know how to converse with their with their you know yeah. with their clients. Right. You right. Know? So, yeah. I mean, I don't know. I'm just maybe I'm just old school, but I just love the idea I think of I am working too. inside of a salon because <laughs> yeah. I feel yeah. like that's where I became my most grounded self when I worked in a salon. Mm -hmm. And you learn so many, many different things. And you do. Absolutely. You know yes. already. Like you learn yeah. how to do it a different way. Absolutely. You yeah. just are able to integrate different ideas with what you do. Yeah. And, that's and how and I learn. Those who don't want to be in that setting, because there are still a group of people who's like, I still want to be in a suite. You uh -huh. need to make sure that you connect with people outside of that suite or you'll yes. get stuck. You'll get stuck. Like, it's important to go to shows. Absolutely. It's important to have a mentor. But you need to be around other people and mm -hmm. not just on social yeah. media because yeah. it's hard to just learn and watch everything on social media. You need to connect with other people to see how they twist their wrists because sometimes mm -hmm. it's just a twist of the wrist that can change a whole oh, hairstyle. Yeah. 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 You can flick your yeah. finger yeah. and you're like, ooh, that, mm -hmm. that one little thing yeah. can be the difference in that how this curl so is set true. on the head. Very that true. is so, so true, Cherise. Mm -hmm. I'm like connecting with people and then networking. Like to get into different doors, it's all about your connection. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. It will be few doors that you'll walk through that you'll get through by yourself. I haven't walked through any by myself. I don't know about you guys. Yeah. Exactly. But every Same. door that I walked through is because somebody helped me walk through yep. that door. It was called yes. a connection. Yes. You know, Nick, can you yes. talk about connections, how important it is Ooh. to have oh, connections, man. to get on those red carpets, oh, man. to get into TV and film? It's I think it's 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 one hundred percent of the job almost to me. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, um, for me, 
I don't think I would be where I am if it were not for my connections. Absolutely. Um, the funny thing about how I even like got to even Angela was funny. Um, I owned a salon with two other people back in 2009. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, we had some issues or whatever. When you have partners, sometimes you do have issues. Mm-hmm. And one day I decided that I was going to leave and go to lunch. And I usually would go to the Publix that were right across the street from the mm-hmm. shop. But I was like, you know what? I need a breather. I'm going to go to the Publix at Atlantic Station. So I drove over to the Publix at Atlantic Station. I never park on the street, but I parked on the street that day. And I'm in my fraternity. Um, I, I'm an alpha. And so um, I'm getting out of the car or whatever. And this other guy walks by. He saw the tag on my car. He was like, what's up, frat? I'm like, okay, what's up, frat? And so he walks over to me. We start talking and all this kind of stuff. He's like, yeah, I'm a, um, I'm a manager. I manage this girl group here in Atlanta. And, you know, they're looking for a hairstylist. You know, I'm like, since you're a hairstylist, you know, I'll bring them to you, whatever. And me thinking, I'm like, oh, God, here we go. Another girl group in Atlanta. You know what I'm saying? Okay, wow, whatever. Um, but it ended up being T-Pain's artist. And they, <laughs> they were, they, yeah, they were a, le- a legit group. And I ended up, start- that's how I started working with them. And the, the one of the lead singers of the group, Sky was like one day she came she's like hey my homegirl wants you to do her hair and I'm like okay who's your homegirl and she's like Angela Simmons I'm like man get out of here Angela Simmons, <laughs> Angela Simmons does not want me to do her hair and that at that at that time they, they were on Ron's house and Angela and Vanessa's hair always was impeccable you know so I'm oh, like right. I'm like Angela don't want me to do her hair. she's like no she really wants you to do her hair and so Angela called me one day um she was coming down for a black enterprise her and Vanessa was coming down for a black enterprise meeting and she was like, hey, I'm going to be at this hotel at this time. Uh, this is like 2009, 2000, this is like 2010. And she's like, Kim, you can, can do my hair. I, I love to have you do it. And from there, we have been in several. That's awesome. From That's that, awesome. From I that know one encounter. exactly how you guys stay, kept that, com, com, um, that relationship. Yeah. When you meet Nick, it's the most genuine connection you can ever get. <laughs> it's literally one of the most genuine. And I mean, it's not like trying to do... Small, small, small talk. You know how people try to do some small talk? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, try to relate. It's literally yeah. just like, just natural. I'm here for you. But Kels, I picked up on that energy. Like, he doesn't even know. Like, I've been watching him. I use Kosa just because of him. Okay? Wow. <laughs> that flat iron is the bomb.com. It is. Yes, so it is. So thank you, Nick. I was wow. like, Woo! <laughs> but I picked up on his energy a while ago, and I was like, I like this guy. Like, oh. He seems so Aww. mad cool. I can't wait to meet him one day. Yeah. So thank you, him. Yeah. So I can't Absolutely. wait to come to LA to meet you. I'm just a country but, boy. That's all it is. I'm just from I, the country. And, but yeah. you know, it's your energy. I'm real good on energy, and I can pick it up real quick because we mm-hmm. do some stuff, but I won't go into yeah, that. I feel but you. anyway, I feel you. I'm an energy like, person. I get it. <laughs> He got real good energy, and I'm Thank like, you. I'm not surprised that you are who you are. Thank See, you. Even me and Rachel was talking before is, and I was like, he got a good, he got a real good vibe. Mm-hmm. Did I tell you that, Rachel? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> good that good speaks vibe. volume if you can speak, if you can talk about somebody's energy through social media. Through social media. Yeah. That speaks volume. I'm so mm-hmm. proud of you, Nick. And I just, Thank you know, you, while we're here, I just want to take the time and say I'm so proud of who you've become, you know, who you are, just from the, the time knowing you, you know, you've always remained the same. You're so talented. I've seen you grow so far. And we've just worked on a movie, a Disney movie. Yes, a, we did. Um, yeah. Is it Descendants? A, Descendants, Descendants, yes, Descendants. Oh, that's awesome. Um, yeah. I can't talk too much about it just because I know it's not out well, yet. Um, but they've done, they've done the first look. Oh, yeah. They, so it's fine. We can talk yeah, about they it. Have, they yeah, have they did the first look. Look. And Nick yeah. was doing Brandy's hair yeah. there. So I, I'm going to say that. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Yeah. Well, you've been killing it. I can tell Thank you that you. you do a great job. So Thank you. I love your work. So I appreciate it. Thank you. you. I, I, I am. I'm glad that you know I was able to be introduced to you today as well. I think sometimes through the algorithms and like you know things like that on social media, some people don't come across you. Some yeah. people do. And yeah. I feel I feel a, a way because this is my first of like be coming across you and I'm just like how did I not know about this amazing person that my sisters you know are, are linked what it to is. So, it's all about divine yeah. timing Rachel yeah, absolutely yeah. It's all about divine timing, and it's all about just like you know, like connecting, like what we was talking about, connecting mm-hmm. with yes. the right people to mm-hmm. get certain things and to meet certain people. So I think that's yes. what it is. Yeah. So, you know, we're connected now, yeah. but I know you <laughs> talked about the mentorship. You talked about how those people wasn't solidified as your mentors, but you took them as your mentors because you got a chance to learn a lot about them. How important was that for you um, to? 
have those people as your guide, as your as your mentor? Oh, it's, it's very important because sometimes getting into the industry, certain things you just green about, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? You just, you just don't, because you don't know, you know, not, and not even as far as being in the salon, but especially in the movie industry, yeah. I was so green. Like, I, I mean, I knew I could do hair, both of but us I were, didn't know. Wait a minute. I, we, yeah, we both were like, what? I got to do what? Like, we didn't know <laughs> what we was doing. Like, what is, like, what is continuity? Like, what is Yeah, that? like, you. You just green. You, I'm, I'm coming. To, I'm coming to do some curls, but I'm gonna uh-huh. lay this hair out. That's all I know to do. You know, exactly. not looking at a script. Don't know what the director right. want. Don't. I don't know nothing. I'm coming to do hair. This is what I do in the shop. So this is what I'm coming to do. Nick, but, you brought yes. up a point. Yes, he, can you tell yes. to talk about working with celebrities works versus working in TV and film? Because those two different worlds too. Well, mm-hmm. complete. I think TV film, TV film. You just got. You, you just have to follow whatever the scripts are, you know, you have to read that script. And that's one thing I just would, I, I, I'm like, I ain't read the script. Just tell me what to do. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to, but you have to, you just got, you have to, you know yeah. what I'm saying? And I, and, and I learned that over the past few years, um, working with Brandy, um, because we did, we did three movies, three movies, two movies last year and one movie this year. And we were gone, you know, we did one in Utah for about three months and that should be coming out next month actually on Netflix. Okay. And we did one in Jersey at the in like the end towards the end of the year last year and that should be coming out soon. Um but you know me having to sit down and like okay I'm response I'm the only one responsible for it because I was a person. Right. You know, so it's mm-hmm. like okay, yeah. I got to sit here and read exactly what this person needs, you know what I'm saying, what this look is supposed to be. I gotta make sure this is right with the director, make sure like this is con, con- the continuity is right for the mm-hmm. next day because we might have to recreate the same look the next day, mm-hmm. you know. So it was like, okay, I really, you really have to do those things. And as just a hairstylist, you know, what I'm saying, just, I just want to do hair, you know, right. yeah, I want to do all this, you know. But I really <laughs> like, even even for for both movies, through all, all three movies, I had to create the look, I had to create the wigs, I had to like uh, one of the. I mean, they've probably shown one of them already. Um, one of the movies we did was a lock wig, so I had to actually sit there and make the lock wig, you know, mm-hmm. and it was, it was, you know, one of the guys out of LA, he provided the locks for me. Hey, they were actually the same locks I did on Ruth Carter for the Oscars um, earlier this year. Mm-hmm. Um, but he made the locks for me. And, um, but yeah, you know, you really have to create what this, what's specific for that character. Cause you got to create the character, yeah. you yeah. know? And, and it's, I mean, it's actually kind of fun. When you, when you really yeah. Start. And you, you got to pay attention and you got to make sure that you're not leaving set because if anything changes on this person's hair and they didn't it's film open. it, and you, you not there. the whole freaking <laughs> thing. Mm-hmm. I couldn't, yeah. I couldn't mm-hmm. even imagine leaving set. You know, and I've worked with people who have left set before, but I couldn't, <laughs> I couldn't, I couldn't I've been, I'm like, okay, I couldn't even imagine leaving my, my person you know, knowing that they're still filming, you know, right, because, because right. Anything, anything can happen between the scene that take, it could be the same scene, but anything could happen between takes. Absolutely. A, right. A, a, a hair could go missing, you know, if it's a fight, you know, anything could happen, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, and it typically uh, no. it happens when you leave. Exactly. Like, it always happens when you leave. Always. Right. Right. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, so. so, have you had any, what was one of your most difficult situations working in TV and film or working with one of your celebrities? Um, that you were able to pivot and figure it out? Hmm. That's a great question. I will say, um, working on one of my shows, I can't, I won't say the name of the show. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) But it was, it was a difficult show to, to work on, not because of the, uh, the actors or anything like that, but it was, it was, the show was just a little difficult to work because it was such a long, we, we worked for such a long time. And I really felt like some days I felt like I was being hazed a little bit, you know, like, okay, <laughs> y'all, y'all don't mind. Like, what's going on? <laughs> like, what's going on? Yeah. But I, I, I do like take that back to my pledging days and when I pledged undergrad, you know, when I played my fraternity undergrad and I, and I feel like that process to me, it enabled me to to live the adult life that I live now because it wasn't mm-hmm. easy to do that. So anything that I encounter nowadays is it's a breeze. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I just take discipline, it back. Discipline, you know, right? Like, it, I do it. I, you just got to do it. You know? Would you consider that discipline? Long, I, mean, I, I can I consider it tenacity and perseverance. Mm-hmm. You no. know? Yeah. Sometimes discipline don't get you all the way there. You know? <laughs> <laughs> you just, just got to put through. 
don't know, you feel like everything that you've been through has prepared you for the moments that you're living oh, in right now? Oh, absolutely. Ab- yeah. Absolutely. Um, I think, you know, going back to Angela, um, I, I talk, we talk all the time. So we were just texting today. So it's like I could talk about her all, all I want to. Um, <laughs> but just Angela, and this is why I always credit Angela um, for my for certain things in my career. Angela put me into spaces that I would not have normally been mm-hmm. in, you know. And, and it's up to you to utilize those spaces Absolutely. once you're there. Once you're there, you know? yeah. Uh, Angela put me in, in front of a lot of people in front of a lot of people and a lot of people may notice of the things that I do, I've done because of her, yeah. mm-hmm. you know? Uh, and, and so I always, always credit her for that. Well, you know, shout out to Angela. <laughs> shout out to Angela. Yeah. But let's, yes. let's, let's dig a little deep in that little space right there okay. where you saying that your client that trusted you, Absolutely. put you in some spaces that you possibly wouldn't have been able to go to, but we need to talk about that thing, trust mm-hmm. and how you act in those spaces yeah. um, for you to be able it's to important. build those relationships. Because you, you may only get one. Because you, you, news travels yeah. fast about people, yeah. about stylists, about makeup artists, or whatever, that work with certain people. Um, one of my friends asked me today, it was yesterday, we was on the phone, and he asked me if any of my clients had ever made me sign an NDA. I sat down, I thought about it, I was like, you know what? None of my none of my clients none of my clients have ever asked me to sign an NDA. Mm-hmm. None of them, you know. And and nowadays they always ask. Yeah. <laughs> the most time before you start working on these people. Yeah. And I say, you know, even Brad Brad has never asked me to sign an NDA. Like I've never signed one. one either. Yeah, they, I've never signed. I, an NDA. I have. I've never I have. Signed one. I have. I've never I signed have. one. I definitely. I've have. never signed. But I've, I've never. I've, I think it's the clients in the position where be, they needed me. Either. I don't, no. I don't even clients who are ex clients, I'm not going to. Even if I felt they didn't do the best by me, mm-hmm. I would not put that out there for a couple of reasons. For one, I'm not going to hurt them or myself. And it re- honestly, it just reflects on you as the stylist. Absolutely. To, me, to be honest, if you ask me. I, I because think sometimes it depends on what the job is. Because yeah. I've had to sign NDAs for people who I've never worked with okay. before when I've gone yeah. to their home. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. For company. Yeah. Yeah. No, not even a company. Like, literally the person yeah, where I'm going, going to their, their home. home yeah, their I can understand high, that. Like, whatever, you know, type of person mm-hmm. where... You at my house, so whatever is right. happening at my That's house true too. Right. is happening at my house. Right. Yeah. Your mouth closed. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I understand so, yeah. that. Not yeah. even like feeling like a, oh, I can't trust you type right. of situation. Right. But, like, That's they don't it's, know just and I don't, it's, exactly, it's business. It's just business. It's business. Right. And there's nothing wrong with it. I mean, I highly recommend no. that they do it. Yeah. To be honest. <laughs> but I just. Oh, I, I just think, re- I think your reputation. You know, Nick, yeah. You trusted you enough in those yeah. spaces to put, yes. to, put, to put you in those things. So I just wanted to, you know, let yeah. people know how important that is from your perspective. Yeah. Yes. For them to trust you when they do put you in these spaces. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I think your re- I think reputations it speaks before you get to the room. Yeah. You know who, who you are. Um, are you easy to work <laughs> with? What is your energy mm-hmm. like? You know, all that it, it arrives to the room before you get there. Before your name is, but you know, I it, agree. like. Like um, even on the, some of the things that I did get on um, coming to America, uh, just that was kind of like a a door o- that just bust open for me, and that was because of my friend. Uh, we I, we me and my friend well, we went to college together, and her sister was working on the show, and she's one of my AKA fans, and we, we talk all the time, and you know it's like, and I ran into her sister at a party, and she's like, yeah, I got, I'm working on the issue. She just knew of me, you know what I'm saying? But she never you know, just knew of me. And she's like, yeah, I'm working on this uh, movie, but I got to leave. But I want you to come in and, and work it, work it, you know, while I'm gone or whatever. I'm like, okay, what, what's up? What is it? She's like, oh, it's coming to America. I'm like, uh, yeah. There. I'm, 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 I'm there. I hear that connection. coming to America. Like, yeah, I'm coming. Like, what are you talking about? And once I got on that set, once I got on that coming to America set, I met Ruth Carter. I met Louisa Anthony, um, who was our department yeah. head. What, did you work? Did you work on? You worked on I coming to America not, too, didn't you? I worked on coming what? to America. I was so annoyed what? because everybody worked on coming to America. Everybody worked on coming to America. Yeah. But I was on <laughs> so that was. Okay, okay, okay. See, I didn't work on Black Panther. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, um, I met Navisa. I met so many people that aided me and 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 carried me to other projects. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, and that was to me like the most. That was because of who I was 
and how I carried myself and what I did when I was in those spaces. Mm -hmm. I'm not trying, I was in back, I worked in background. You know, I was in the, I was working in background. It was a lot of background on coming to America. Yeah. yeah. And um, one day, one the department head was like, okay, I'm gonna put you in the trailer today. And I mean, I didn't expect that. You know what I'm saying? Cause I'm working in, I'm just here to work. I'm working in background. I'm here to turn these people out. Let's go. I'm, I'm, I'm cool. We're just working cause I need the hours. I need the day so I can get into you. Right. I'm just here to work, yeah. you know? Um, and she was like, no, I'm gonna put you in the, in the trailer. And once she put me in the trailer, I started, I worked with In Vogue. I worked with Salt and Pepper, Gladys Knight, all those people that was in the movie. That's what we did. So that's it was, while you but that goes back to it was an experience. Right? So while you was on that back trailer, to connections. absolutely, sorry, absolutely, sorry. yeah, it's all about connections. All about yeah. And uh, so Ruth, while and you were on that trailer, mm -hmm. let's talk about why you was in that trailer. Mm -hmm. Since we're already, I mean, even though this is not a part of the subject, but we just want to do this <laughs> before, before we get into that's the okay. questions because we have to ask um, the, the audience. We're gonna let you guys ask a few questions, but. Since you said you started in background and they mm -hmm. trusted you enough to bring you to the trailer, how was your behavior on that trailer? Were you talking to the people secretly trying to get their number? Were you trying to take somebody's oh. job? No. Were you, were you trying to steal people's stuff on the trailer? No. Um, were you trying to make yourself look better than the next stylist? Please talk about your experience on that trailer. I think etiquette goes a long way. And like I said, I was green too. You know, I wasn't that versed in in etiquette for movies, but I was. I know I had a, a type of etiquette in me. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I knew what not to do. You know, right. um, when I was on that trailer, you know, of course the stylists, you know, the more seasoned people would come in and be like, "Hey, this is what you do. This is what you don't do." Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I, and these were people who are veterans in the game in the movie industry. They would come in and be like, "Hey, do this, do that." Um, you know, Miss Ann Bray. I mean. And she's a legend, like legend. Ann Bray took me by the hand, and like, I mean, that lady was amazing. Like, she was ama amazing. Um, she was just, just teach us. She just taught us so much, mm -hmm. you know. But um, there's just, you know, there's a certain etiquette that you have when you're on that trailer. Don't go in there trying to make these people your clients um, or friends. Now, if if <laughs> if they extend, if they extend themselves to you. Sometimes you don't want you don't want to be rude and, and discount them because they're extending themselves to you. Like I'll be I'll be honest. That's how I met Ruth Carter mm -hmm. without being in that trailer. Ruth Carter saw me in there working with, you know, in Vogue and um, Gladys Knight and all those people or whatever. And she came in one day. She's like, hey, I need you. I need you for my do this. I need you to do my hair. Do this. So that was how that was how I met Ruth Carter. And that's how she's been. She's been my client ever since mm -hmm. then. But See, I, it's different when they extend the hand exactly. to you. I didn't right. go in there looking. When you come after them, that's a problem. That's right. a problem. I didn't go in there you looking for Ruth Carter. Mm -hmm. right. You weren't going Carter in there to take selfies with people. was destiny coming to you. Yes. And, yes. Yeah. And it's almost exactly. a thin line even when, thin, they, when they extend thin. that hand. Exactly. It's a still a thin line. There is a difference between men and women when it comes to that part, too. Yeah. Yes, it is. I want to talk about that just slightly because... You know, I think that when it comes to women, I don't know why we're like this, but most women, we're going to be automatically thinking you're going to, not me, because I don't ever think that. What's for me is for me. me Nobody too. can take well, nothing from me. Yeah. Like Nobody yeah. can take We don't compete. From me. Um, but we're going to automatically think, is she trying to steal right. my job? Why is she talking to them? Mm -hmm. You know, so it's a little bit more easier. It's like a slap yeah. a little bit with guys. I don't know why. It's just that masculine yeah. thing. But even still, nevertheless, playing devil's advocate, mm -hmm. It's still a thin line it's when you are when, when a client is actually a client that's already on a trailer that's never seen you before yeah. and they come right. to you style a hairstyle that looks so yeah. good and they like wait a minute I need him yeah. or I need her. Uh -huh. It's but, a thin line because but, I mean in me, what did you do in that situation when she asked you the, that? When she asked the thing you about the thing was the only reason that was like uh 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 it would made it a little bit okay was that Ruth was not a part of the film. She was not an actress. She was, she was part of the production. Mm -hmm. She was just like us, you know? Right. She, was, she, was the, she was in the wardrobe. You know, even though she is Ruth Carter, she was still, you know, she was she, still in, in wardrobe. It's true. You know what yeah. I'm saying? She was, work, she was working, you know, and not one of the actress, actresses. Right. So right. that was kind of like, it. I, I mean, it was kind of okay, but, you know, it's still one of those things that you kind of, 
kind of want to test the you just want to see real careful see what the temperature is before you do it yeah. you know because it can it, it can keep you from getting that next I'm, job because that the, the 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 department head might not have liked it yeah. you know like hey yeah. i don't like what you did on this last production so i won't hire you again mm-hmm. and, 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 and you can speak on that you guys and, and i just want to just put this out there just for because this is a mentor moment right here mm-hmm. um just to speak on that when you are hired by a department here or whoever brings you on, you're there to impress them. Them only. Yeah. You're there to impress exactly. them. You're not there to impress anybody else because mm-hmm. your relationship is to keep with them. Right. You yeah. want to make sure that you keep that good relationship with them so that because they're the ones that's going to get you hired on the next job. They're the yeah. ones that's going to look out for you. Um, they're the ones who's going to have your back, you know, yeah. if something else pop up or if they hear, mm-hmm. a, you know, a little birdie saying they need another job or something like that. So you just got to make sure that you keep up with them. But let's go yeah. here and go to these questions so we can get Nick off of <laughs> there. I'm so sorry, Nick. We asked oh, okay. you so many questions. Um, fun. But we have some questions from our audience. And if you guys want to speak or ask any questions, please feel free to chime in. We need you guys to go ahead and mm-hmm. just ask away. But I'm going to go ahead and ask this one question, one of our um people left in the box go ahead and hit that question mark so you can add the, the questions there guys what, um so the first go first question oh, okay. is what made y'all realize what made you realize you prefer and switch to tv and film or red carpets over a studio booth bar or weddings that's a that's a lot <laughs> yeah. um, um, because a but, lot of people in the industry still do it all yeah yeah, yeah. still yeah. do weddings yeah, in the I won't do a so, wedding though. I won't so maybe- do a wedding. <laughs> I'm doing one wedding. I'm doing one wedding for my friend this next month, and she's the only one. This Tell is us my why first you wedding. Went to a wedding, Nick. Why, why wouldn't you do a wedding? Because, Tell us why because um, I think it's, it's, <laughs> you know sometimes you you know you gotta you have to break it down, especially for black brides and bridesmaids. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because they the bridesmaids think they the bride. Sometimes. They the bride. It's like baby, yeah. I'm here to do the bride. Okay, That's this so is her insane. moment. Let her have Y'all, her moment. Y'all, I don't even think we could talk about black because it's the Indian people that be really it's, going hate. Oh, them Indian oh, women. Everybody. Oh, my yeah. God. Let's them just Indian make it all people, Let's y'all. Just but, but them Indian women, they're going to give you your check, though. They're going to give you a good oh, check. Y'all is wrong. It's the Arab body over here, they okay? got three weddings in the world. Oh, they're going to have three weddings. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but, you know, people got to play about their weddings, oh, honey. Yeah. They do not play about I'm their hair, okay? Right That's, That's it. That's it. <laughs> but All you got to right, let so, them know, like, baby, so, I'm here the whole day. This is my whole day that whole, I'm doing this wedding. So, you know, you get, it, my time costs. <laughs> so I got to I gotta charge accordingly, you know? And sometimes they be like, well, well, what if I just come to the shop and get it done? And then, no, I can't, yeah. you, baby. I, I work like yeah. that. You know, I don't you work know what? Like, I love doing weddings. I, I love making, I love, I love doing weddings, y'all. And I'm like, yo, I can probably dedicate maybe like two months to just weddings. I love doing um, They're oh fun God. for I me. Could, I could too. I could too because they pay well. And I know mm-hmm. that I can go in there, I can whip it up, and I can go on about yeah. my business. <laughs> but you know what, though? The people who weddings I do are referrals. I've uh-huh. never really done a random person wedding. It's referrals. So I work closely to people who refer because yeah. they they already know when I walk in with my pink hair and my briefcase mm-hmm. and I'm I mean what business. So please don't please don't try to try me um mm-hmm. and be mean. Right. <laughs> yeah. so, well <laughs> let's kind of talk about that Kels because when you're working in TV and film, let's say, you know, you take on a career in TV and film, mm-hmm. there's the balance because, you know, if you're really going full time, you're not going to be able to do all this. Let's you're not. You're not. 100. Definitely. You're it's not, not going to happen. Definitely. Definitely. So, and to I say you want to do it all, all yeah, to say you want to do it all, you will not be able to do full time TV and film. You will be doing background and coming every so many days because yeah. this world is not a oh I can just do this when I feel like it it doesn't yeah. work that yeah. way yeah. so nope, that would be not. very unrealistic to think that you can kind of have it all in this world yeah. Yeah. Um, it doesn't quite work that yeah. way mm-hmm. I'm just going to tell you 100% yeah. of the time the hours are long They are very but long. we all crazy enough to love yeah. it mm-hmm. the people who are in it either love it or hate yeah. it and yeah. we kind of fall on the love side because <laughs> it stretches your boundaries so far. You learn it really so much. Does. But yeah. you, 
Eventually, you schedule you a wedding. Have to pick a side. <laughs> and, and we get call sheets. We don't know when we're going to work until the very next day. Like, when that call sheet night. comes out, yeah, exactly. I like, can't oh, tell you tomorrow. I'm going to be to work tomorrow at um, 2 o'clock. I don't know because I'm going to be here at 2 a.m. Mm-hmm. tomorrow. Uh-huh. The next day, it may be 3 a.m. Mm-hmm. or it might be 3 p.m. Mm-hmm. So we don't know, yeah. know our schedule. It's not a regular job. Mm-hmm. No, it's not. Right. Not at all. Right. Oh. Exactly. That's so true. So I hope that answered one of the questions. We have mm-hmm. another question. How long did it take you to adjust? I don't <laughs> know what that means, but maybe I'm assuming she's saying, how long did it take you to adjust being from going from uh, the hair salon to film, since we're talking about that. Ooh, I don't know if I ever adjusted. <laughs> I was thinking that, so you don't adjust. You don't adjust. Make it you don't, you don't adjust. adjust. You just there's do not it. A, there's not yeah, a particular yeah. one time that you come into work every day. You may come in at 7 a.m. or 7 p.m. You, you just do it. Just, you just do it. You can teach your, your body you how to go to sleep at you any given right. time because that's what you adjust to. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. You have to, to teach your body how to go to yep. sleep, and at, when you get on this this train, you make yourself. Because I see people like, oh, I'm gonna be up all night. I say, yeah, that's today. But maybe <laughs> by the end of the week, you are gonna tell your body, oh, you going to oh, sleep. Uh huh. Oh, you go. Yeah. Go, yeah. go to sleep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. learn that program real yeah. quick. Yeah. The, Number of times I have fallen asleep on set is insane. So <laughs> <laughs> we won't say that. For real though, I mean, if you I can gotta, sleep just like this. I can sleep sitting right up just like this. <laughs> <laughs> but see, if you guys have got a relationship like us four, it's been a couple times where I told Nick, I'm gonna go go to sleep real quick. Look out for me. I'll be back. <laughs> anybody to keep going and never stop don't give up on anything that you want to do in life because if you look at it and you, and you feel like okay this is not working for me you're gonna always always think about it yeah. you know what i'm saying you're going yeah. well what if i would have kept going what if i would have yeah. continued to do without on the track that i was going on you'll always look back and consider that like a failure so like for me i always say keep going just, just never never stop you know just just keep doing it because it can happen you just never know when that 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 magic day will happen. You know, it could be one day, it could be one person, it could be one encounter that can change your entire life and the trajectory of your career. You know, um, I, I tell you, like, like I said, even with, with me, like that one day, that one day at that Publix changed the entire trajectory of my career. Mm-hmm. You know, I ended up from that one day, it took me to being the personal hairstylist for Brandy on three movies, you know, and that to me was just I could have I could have dreamt that for myself, you know what I'm saying? But I I grew up with Brandy, you know what I'm saying? So she was yeah. our, <clears throat> she was our it girl in the nineties and two thousands. Yeah. You know, we grew up and now, you know what I'm saying? We grew up with her. You know, so for me to be, oh, it's Brandy, what's up? You know what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. to me that I never ever imagined that. You know what I'm saying? I, but I, one I, thing I, about that, Nick, when the opportunity came and presented itself to you. You were ready. Oh, absolutely. You were ready. Right. You were ready. Absolutely. You were absolutely. ready. Yeah. You were ready mentally. You were ready. You were ready with your skill set, and yeah. you just you were able to walk into it and kill it, mm-hmm. and continue to kill it yeah. because you bring your A game every time you come. Yeah. So I think that's something that we all have to keep in mind. Mm-hmm. Like, continue to sharpen your tools. Continue to always right. stay strong in what you yeah. do so that you can always bring your A game and you're always yeah. ready when those opportunities come. Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. Rachel, I love that. That's yeah. a gem right there. You got to yeah. be ready. You got to be ready. You can't get But the, right. but the, the funny thing is, the salon taught me how to be ready. Yes. The salon taught me how to be ready. Nick, yes. one thing that I tell my mentees is that you have to invest in your career and it will pay you back. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What is the one thing that you would tell people that they need to do if they want to go to the next level? Find somebody that's already at the next level. Amen. Find, find somebody that's already there because if you see it, you can become it. Mm-hmm. 
you know, Absolutely. and I, I'm, a, I'm a firm believer in that, you know, and just like, just like for me, when I saw that lady, when I saw Tanya Bellamy at that two story salon, and that was just one of her salons, she had another one in the city that mm-hmm. was just as big. When I saw them at that, at that salon with these crystal chandeliers and, and champagne and every and these ladies coming there paying top dollar i'm talking about all the business women in atlanta all the entertainers when i saw it i'm from the south i'm from the south georgia i'm from the country so when i think of a salon i'm thinking of like a 10 five chair salon you know what i'm saying right. you know that's what i thought you know i could have never imagined that you know what i'm saying because i never right. saw it mm-hmm. you know and even even me being on set watching um um these department heads lawrence and and uh, Mona and just watching them and seeing how many how great they're doing in these spaces it's like okay they're doing that I could become that yeah. you know what I'm saying? so I, I always tell people to to, to, to watch people yeah. and and why if that's the level that you want to become and to, or, or to get to you have to find somebody that's at that level that's willing to share that knowledge yeah. yes. find a mentor yes I'm going to do this last question Yes, Sharice, find a mentor. That's what we all about, honey. <laughs> um, so somebody had asked this last question. What's the best advice about set posture and being seen and not heard? I can answer mm, this. Can I, can I, I answer this that. one, y'all? Mm-hmm. Can I answer this uh, one? Go for it. Go so, so as you guys can see, my hair is super bright pink. Mm-hmm. It's bright mm-hmm. pink. So when I walk in a room, everybody look at me anyway. Mm-hmm. Right? And so I have you. to make sure that when I come in a room, most of the time, it could be a good thing and a bad thing to have pink hair. Some people judge me already and they think that I'm probably ghetto because my hair is pink, you know, or then some people probably say, oh, she's dope as fuck because her hair is pink. Um, but I always yep. make sure when I come in a room, I own a room, I walk in, I speak, and I go straight to my station, set my stuff up the best way I can, and I slay the heck out exactly. some hair, okay? Exactly. I slay the heck out some hair, and I do that damn ponytail mm-hmm. like nobody can do that ponytail. <laughs> I'm going to do that um, silk press like nobody going to do that silk press. Mm-hmm. And everybody's watching. You never know. Yep. Everybody's mm-hmm. watching. Never know. You guys can be on the same level as far as working, but you that person going to possibly be your boss at, at the next the Absolutely. The right. Next the department head on so the next you one. make yeah. sure when you come in a room, I'm not saying yeah. have pink hair like me, <laughs> But I'm just saying, you what I'm careful? saying, you come in there and you make sure you put on your best. You look yeah. your best. As Nick said earlier, he was coming to work and he always makes sure he had on all black and he looked professional and he looked good. So you go in, you look professional, you look good, and you slay a head. I have yep. worked on so many shows. when I, I remember I worked on res- Respect. And when mm-hmm. I came in and worked on Respect, and then years later, I worked on this other show, and the lady was my boss. She said, you know why I hired you? She said, because me and you worked on respect, and every time I looked at you, you was to yourself, and you was working, and that working and twirling mm-hmm. and curling and doing the best <laughs> job. And I was like, oh, my mm-hmm. God, really? I didn't even think she can use And I never even seen her. It was so many hairstylists. On yes, that. yes, and on So many. Yeah. So it's like, oh, I'm itching. I'm getting bit up by these mosquitoes. But, um... <laughs> Every time, you never know. You just you never, never know. Watching you, so you just show up. You look your best. You feel your best, and you do your yeah. best. Yeah. And be yeah. your ear and not a voice. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yes. yes. But girls, I would say your pink hair is always a staple. You mm-hmm. you know, you, I'll never change it because that's how everybody remember. You know, the one with pink hair. Yeah. Oh, yes. yeah. <laughs> yes. that is, I mean, because you've had it for so long, so long, and it's such a it's such a good thing. I mean, it's it's because you always wear it nice. You know what I mean? Yes. You know, it's just nice, you know. Thank but, you. Uh, but I'm you know, and, and that, for thirteen years, man. And, but, uh, really? you, know, you you in it now, so just stay yeah. with it. Yeah, <laughs> it's for thirteen. But it drew me to you. I'm like, oh, she she looks fun. Let me go holler at her. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like we can have some laughs. You know yeah, what I'm saying? We had so many. I'm coming to get that yeah. color tomorrow, though. Yes, okay. we did. <laughs> N-I-K-K-R-O-K-K-S hair, all K's, no C's. 
So yes. that's pretty much my handle for pretty much everything. Um, yeah, Nick rocks hair. So yeah. He yes. does yes. rock hair, y'all. He rocks <laughs> Rocking it. Rockin Guys, rockin we are going to be doing this every Monday, every single Monday. We started out at first, we were trying to figure out what days work, but we found that Monday at 6, 6 p.m. Pacific time works for us. 5 right? p.m. Central. Yes. 6 p.m. Eastern. Right. right? Look, and I, and I thought it was Eastern. 5 p.m. I thought it was 5 p.m. Eastern. So I'm looking, I'm sitting, I'm sitting there like, what is that? Where is that? And I look on the block, oh, it's Central. Okay, okay. Yes. I'm so glad we got a chance to do this. So until yes. next Monday at 6 yes. p.m. Eastern time and 5 p.m. Central. Central time. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys. Thank, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Y'all. Right, See y'all later. Bye. 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 We enjoyed you, Nick. I enjoyed y'all, too. <laughs> you know, this is last production, so I won't hire you again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And, and, and you can speak on that. You guys, and, and I just wanted to put this out there just for, because this is a mentor moment right here. Mm -hmm. um, just to speak on that. When you are hired by a department here or whoever brings you on, you're there to impress them. Them mm -hmm. only. Yeah. Exactly. You're there to impress exactly. them. You're not there to impress anybody else because mm -hmm. your relationship is to keep with them. Right. You yeah. want to make sure that you keep that good relationship with them Better. so that because they're the ones that's going to get you hired on the next job. They're the yeah. ones that's going to look out for you. Um, they're the ones who's going to have your back, you know, yeah. if something else pop up or if they hear, mm -hmm. a, you know, a little birdie saying they need another job or something like that. So you just got to make sure that you keep up with them. But let's go yeah. ahead and go to these questions so we can get Nick up off of here. <laughs> I'm so sorry, Nick. We asked oh, okay. you so many questions. Um, but we have some questions from our audience. And if you guys want to speak or ask any questions, please feel free to chime in. We need you guys to go ahead and yeah. just ask away. But I'm going to go ahead and ask this one question, one of our um people left in the box go ahead and hit that question mark so you can add the, the questions there guys um what, so what first go first question oh, okay. is what made y'all realize what made you realize you prefer and switch to tv and film or red carpets over a studio booth bar or weddings that's a that's a lot <laughs> yeah. um, um, because a but, lot of people in the industry still do it all yeah yeah, yeah. still yeah. do weddings yeah, in the I won't do a so, wedding though. I won't I mean, do a wedding. <laughs> I'm doing one wedding. I'm doing one wedding for my friend this next month, and she's the only one. This, Tell this us my why first you wedding. Do a wedding next. Is why wouldn't you do a wedding? Because, because um, I think it's, it's, <laughs> you know sometimes you you know you gotta you have to break it down, especially for black brides and bridesmaids. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because they the bridesmaids think they the bride. Sometimes. They the bride. It's like baby, yeah. I'm here to do the bride. Okay, I this is her say. moment. Let her have her moment. I don't even think we could talk about black because it's the Indian people that be really it's, going hate. Oh, them Indian oh, women. Everybody. Oh, my God. Let's them just Indian say all people, y'all. But, but them Indian women, you know, they're going to give you your check, though. They're going to give you a good oh, check. Y'all is wrong. Y'all is wrong. It's the gay money over here. Okay. Got, got three weddings in the world. Oh, they're going to have three weddings. Yes. Yes. <laughs>
So, uh, and to I say you want to do it all, all yeah, to say you want to do it all, you will not be able to do full time TV and film. You will be doing background and coming every so many days because yeah. this world is not a, oh, I can just do this when I feel like it. It doesn't yeah. work that yeah. way. Yeah. So nope, that would be not. very unrealistic to think that you can kind of have it all in this world. Yeah. yeah. Um, it doesn't quite work that yeah. way. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to tell you 100% of yeah. the time. The hours are long. They are very but long. But we are crazy enough to love yeah. it. Mm -hmm. The people who are in it, either love it or hate yeah. it. And yeah. we kind of fall on the love <laughs> side because it stretches your boundaries so far. You learn it really so does. much. But yeah. you... If Eventually, you, you do a have to pick a side. <laughs> and, and we get calls. She's, we don't know when we're going to work until the very next day. Like, when that call that comes night. out, yeah, exactly. I like, can't oh, tell you tomorrow. I'm going to be to work tomorrow at um, 2 o'clock. I don't know because I'm going to be here at 2 a.m. Mm -hmm. tomorrow. Uh -huh. The next day, it may be 3 a.m. Mm -hmm. or it might be 3 p.m. Mm -hmm. So we don't know yeah. our schedule. It's not a regular job. Mm -hmm. No, it's not. Right. Not at all. Right. Oh. Exactly. That's so true. So I hope that answered one of the questions. We have mm -hmm. another question. How long did it take you to adjust? I don't <laughs> know what that means, but maybe I'm assuming she's saying, how long did it take you to adjust being from going from uh, the hair salon to film, since we're talking about that. Ooh, I don't know if I ever adjust it. <laughs> I was thinking that, so you don't adjust. <laughs> you don't adjust. Just make it happen. You, you don't, don't adjust. adjust. Don't you don't adjust. adjust. You just there's do it. Not a, there's not yeah, a particular yeah. one time that you come into work every day. You may come in at 7 a.m. or 7 p.m. You, you just do it. it. Just, you just do it. You get to you your body how to go to sleep at 